Let's pause to hear Lillian Bayliss describing those early days in her own words. I became acting manager at the Old Vic for my Aunt Emma Collins in March 1898 to allow her more time for her housing and other works for the public good. The programme in those days consisted of lectures on science and travel on Tuesdays, opera recitals and ballad concerts on Thursdays, and variety shows on the other nights. At these performances, we enlisted the service of really first-class people. Artists of international reputation have made their debut at the Old Vic. Gradually, the desire for ballad concerts became less, and operas grew in favour. I've never heard her voice before. You have, presumably, Liz. Yes, I have, but the first time that I heard Lillian Bayliss's voice, I got a terrible shock, because as I'd read a lot about her, one thing that gets mentioned over and over again, particularly by certain kinds of musicians, is that she has a very unpleasant voice and that she has a dreadful accent, which most people identified as Cockney, although probably was actually more South African. Yes, I could hear the South African. But I know that in that record she was putting on her her best voice, probably. But it was such a surprise, because I was expecting something really unpleasant to listen to. The story is that her rather individual style of driving once brought out her grief in her solid, tired Trojan car. Miss Bayliss lay unconscious under the wreckage. Her secretary explained to the policeman that this was Lillian Bayliss, manager of the old Vic. The prostrate figure opened one clear blue eye and added, and Sadler's Wells. One of my favourite anecdotes is that whenever anyone asked for a pay rise, Bayliss always said she had to ask God, and um, God was never on record as ever giving a pay rise. Laurence Olivier actually also added that she trained her little dogs to go for the ankles of anyone who asked for a pay rise. Now, I mean, that's a funny story, but it also helps Bayliss in her management of her theatres, which paid, let's be frank, atrocious wages, and equity would not countenance them these days. But it gave Bayliss a way of dealing with the fact that she was not going to give a pay rise, not making it too personal, not making it too nasty. It became a standing joke, and eventually people stopped asking for pay rises. So the the anecdote actually helped her in her management 